Good morning, afternoon. I guess I don't know when you're watching this. Oh well, that's fine. Whenever you're watching it, I'm very happy that you are. <laughs> I am Joseph Prepper, Miss Callie G, whichever you prefer to call me by. I am sitting in Reading Time with the Queen's Studios. This was our Under the Sea theme backdrop. So if you haven't seen the uh, Just Keep Swimming edition of Reading Time with the Queens, it's on Reading Time with the Queens' YouTube video. I'll link that below. Today, <laughs> I actually have not even worn the codfish outfit that is in the last video. This is in between me like finishing the, the dress from last month and starting, and actually like performing in the dress from last month. The reason for this is that I just am trying to get a jump on things because the coming projects are going to be more and more difficult. Specifically, our June and July reading times I'm planning costumes are a little bit more complex. So I'm trying to give myself ample time to prepare for those and also not create so much of a workload so that I can kind of maybe like start getting ahead of myself. So to start on that process, I am working today starting to see what I can do to create my next costume, which is going to be a Ladybug inspired, you know, James and the Giant Peach, Miss Ladybug inspired Ladybug outfit. I'm not gonna do six arms or, you know, the extra arms just because I don't have really the time or the energy to figure that out. But I am taking from the color palette and the textures that she has, and I'll kind of show you a picture. So that's my reference. What I'm really trying to do is keep this, like I said, uh, not as involved. So I am really only going to be constructing the vest portion of this outfit. So I have like a blouse coming, I have pants coming, I already have a hat that I'm going to be using. And my goal is to use stuff that I have already used. If you watched my last video, you will remember that I tried to use an orange fabric from another earlier project, but was unable to use that fabric because I didn't have enough. So I ended up buying more. This time around, um, kind of like I did with my jellyfish purse from that video, I'm going to be taking some red fabric that I already have from past projects and seeing if I can piece together enough to make a vest. <laughs> I'm also using a pattern that I used many, many years ago. This is a Simplicity 46, nope, excuse me, 4762. It's a, it's actually a men's vest pattern. And I haven't quite decided which one I want to do, probably whichever one has the least fabric and also looks the nicest. So probably this, well, not the kids one, <laughs> this this A style with the, with the four buttons that are a little bit more formal looking and the no collar. My plan for this is to, like I said, just use some extra red fabric that I have laying around. These fabrics are from like a, like a leotard looking thing that I tried to create like a Beyonce look like. It was a mess. Um, also probably shouldn't be appropriating her outfits. I later realized, so. <clears throat> We all learn and grow. That being said, I am going to try and use that fabric in order to make something new and different. And then, yes, we'll see what happens. I will probably have to go buy buttons. We'll see what else I'll have to get. But I also need to like make some, make a ladybug theme. So on the back, I'm going to be putting a lot of spots. Um, and I also have some bl black felt that I'm gonna be reusing from a past project for this. So yes, we're using old stuff, saving some money, doing less, well, saving some money on this particular project. I did spend a little bit of money on that, the outfit, but um, you know, art. Let's get into the gig, shall we? Okay, today we are trying something new and we are doing voiceover because someone suggested it, probably Jaren, because he has good suggestions and I usually listen to him. <clears throat> so this is me, uh, you know, ironing. It's a, it's a good time uh, making sure all the wrinkles are out. You'll see I am pinning the sections of this vest. I had to cut out some new sections. The size that I had used <laughs> back when I was making this for a 4-H project, this, this vest, was a medium. I measured and it said that I should have a large for the bust size that I was doing. Mind you, because I'm, you know, putting boobs on. Um, but I ended up going with a large because there was no uh, extra large in the package after I had cut out the medium. So there you saw me using a medium size and tracing to make it the large size with that chalk. 
So I cut it out of the regular fabric and then used that exact same piece to cut it out of the lining fabric so I didn't have to measure twice. There is an interfacing that I am going to be ironing to the lining side of the front to keep things a little bit more stiff because there are going to be some buttons that come into play later. The thing about this vest is that I am going to have to put a bunch of black spots on the back because that, I don't know if you know this, do you know this? That's where ladybugs have their spots. Um, so this is the back of the vest. You can kind of see through it, but there's gonna be a lining. But before I do any actual like sewing of this piece where the spots are gonna be to the other pieces, I'm just going to take the liberty of having this piece free and add a bunch of black spots. Now I've done this technique before. I don't know if it's the correct way to do it, but this is how I do it. So I have all this black felt. This is premium black felt. What you do is you just take it and you cut out the things that you want and then you do a really dense zigzag stitch to tack it to the fabric. I did this once on that dress you saw last month same exact thing, except it was with a jack o face. This time it'll be a little bit different because it's big spots. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna cut out some of these out of this fabric and make sure that I'm keeping the proportions correct. Ladybugs do have a somewhat symmetrical back on their uh, wings, on their shell. <laughs> They're beetles, right? Ah, uh, yes. Very premium tools we have here in the Joseph Krupper <laughs> sewing. <laughs> Sewing room, um, I'm literally in my kitchen using a pot lid for um, tracing. Oh, and that's a salt shaker. Great, groundbreaking, never been seen before. I will say I regret putting a very large dot directly in the middle of the back just because it does take up a lot of space, but it does end up cute. So please do not harangue me too much. Now this is a very dense zigzag stitch. Actually, it's a buttonhole stitch that I've just, instead of putting the buttonhole foot on, I just do the stitch and use the regular foot to guide along the curves and things. And it takes a little bit of time, actually not as much as you think it takes. And it ends up looking real cute at the end. I don't know if this is like a way to do it, but it is the way that I do it, so enjoy. I do wonder if footage of this is very helpful to you since my hand's basically blocking most of this, but I am sewing a dart up the front of the vest at this point. So that's what's going on behind my hands. You saw the very long piece of all of the vest pieces sewn together. So this is me trying to figure out how to turn the whole thing inside out. Um, it's not that difficult, especially since it is pretty wide, but you gotta be pretty uh, gentle in things. Make sure that you're taking the time to lay out all the, uh, the, the pieces flat. Also trimming around the corners and making little notches in the tight spots is really important in making sure that everything ends up pretty and flat at the uh, at the end when you're done. Oh my goodness, and here I am showing off 
there <laughs> it's my model walk um the part here that you can't see very well because my hands are in the way you have to tack together the two sides right and most of this the the front part the part you see is machine sewn and then the part on the inside you have to go in and sew up with a slip stitch so that it um it all looks really pretty and there's me doing that that part um, since i watched this video i had seen a video by kathy hay where she explains not to have thread this long when you're hand sewing and i am taking her advice from now on so i just like to make sure there is a point of sharing that <laughs> i am doing something now that i will probably not be doing in the future and here i am sewing the buttons in with the little marks that i have made in chalk I'll link that Kathy Hay video in the description below for anyone that wants to see it. This is a great side view of how a button hole foot works. So you line it up where you want the button to end and then you move backwards with that little button hole foot. The little lever gets hit in the back and then it moves it forward. This is not really how you're supposed to do the buttons. Actually, those two on the outside that I just buttoned are supposed to be fake and on the outside on that side, but I wanted to do it this way, so I did. Hi, I look, what? Sometimes I just look at myself on my days off and I'm like, what's going on? Um, I had a day today and that's all I'll say about that. I'm still having a day, mind you. I have um, gotten the vest done, the vest is done. I picked out these, so I did go to the Joanna a couple days ago and I picked out these beautiful, I mean, they're just black buttons, but I feel like they give me that aesthetic from the front, but I did wanna make sure I was only keeping the spots on the back and that is that. The pants came for this, the blouse is on the way. What I still need to do is work on the hat, which I got some materials for as well. And then I decided I am going to make a mask for this outfit. And I have some scraps left from this fabric, which I, this was made out of scrap fabric. So it's interesting that I have enough left. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna still walk you through me doing that and making basically this in mask form. I literally dug these scraps out of my scrap bin. <laughs> So you're welcome. Um, this pattern that I'm using is one that my grandmother sent me at the beginning of the pandemic. And I have used not very many times because it is a little bit more complex than the square sheets that I was cutting out for a lot of my mask sewing. But this is a nice fitted one that goes right over your nose that I like using for drag outfits. I have made it for a couple drag outfits. You'll see in the end result that ends up looking quite nice. Um, what you do is, yeah, just pick out a couple. I was, I'll show you here, you'll see all those, those strips of red I was going to use as the straps. I end up not doing that. I end up using these because they're easier and they actually end up fitting better. And here you will see me doing that exact same little method with those dots that I did on the back of the vest on the front of this mask. So everything is tied together and looks beautiful on Ladybug. And you cannot mistake that I am a Ladybug from the bunk, back or the front, wherever you are. It's a plan.
Okay, here we are starting on the hat. I basically, I just wanted to give off that ladybug vibe, you know? I have that, that hat uh, starting out pretty wide brim. I take some, uh, not zip ties, <laughs> pipe cleaners and I braid them together. And I do really, really long ones at first because that's what I thought I needed. But I end up cutting these down because they need to be a little bit shorter for, for this, for my liking at least. Then I just take some of this glue and I clamp that down to a very large pom-pom. Hi everyone. Um, it's like two weeks later. Like I've literally been doing nothing. I got the little antennas done on this hat. I don't even know where I am in narrating this project. So hopefully I'm not skipping anything, but um, these are done. Oh, look at that little antennas. I'm probably gonna have to cut them down just a bit, but they're cute. Basically, I am going to finish the hat and I'll just show you some footage of me doing that. And then I need to remove the buttons from the front of the pants. My pants came and they have gold buttons on them. It doesn't really vibe with the rest of the outfit. So I have gold buttons, I'll put in something else. Here's the hat, I'll show you. Have I even shown you the hat? Hmm, yes. I have had this hat for a long time and um, have not really had the chance to wear it as of yet. Beth wore this hat actually in our Kinsey 2 ventures, but I have I have not really in drag. So I'm making it into a ladybug hat today. It's going to be beautiful and amazing and groundbreaking and stunning and never been seen before. A quick note, I literally found this fabric that is going to match my blouse at the Joanne. It's not the same fabric mind you, but it's really close and I'm very proud of myself. It's tying it in, just like I'm saying, tying it all in. That's all my drag is, is just tying it together. I do a few tacking stitches on the side here. Actually, this is the front and then because I get a little bit lazy, <laughs> I take some pins and pin the sides to make sure they're all pulled taut around the inside before I put the little antennas in. Ah yes, and these are some little tiny bug patches that I found at the Joanne. I didn't know where to split them, so this is where they ended up. Alrighty, here I am. I have collected all the pieces. So I got my hat on. Woo! I'm gonna wear a black wig with this, I think. You'll see in a second. I also have my mask. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This beautiful blouse that I got, uh, the vest that I made, and these pants that I just ripped the buttons off. So, in a couple of seconds, you're gonna see me dress up like a ladybug woman. Here we go. Whoop. Bum, 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 bum. Whoop. Psych! I first need to tell you about this sweater. Oh my gosh, it's so cool, right? Reading time with the queens on my chest. Wonderful, groundbreaking, never been seen before. This is, a, this is a sweater that is now available in Reading Time with the Queens. This is Red Bubble Store. Yes, we have not only this design, which is our logo, which is technically pretty much all that you need, but um, yeah, also some other designs that I have been working tirelessly on. We're also working on getting new designs in there so that you have you know some options. But if you wanna represent Reading Time with the Queens out and about, uh, on a shirt or a button, look at that, it's too cute. Or we even have things like mugs and, and bags, totes, stuff like that. You can go check that out and a portion of the proceeds will go to Reading Time with the Queen so that we continue doing this program. And anyways, back to the thing that you were actually looking for. Woo!
Alrighty, that's that's the outfit. Thank you so much for watching this uh this this uh <laughs> this sewing vlog. I apologize if the the um perspective or the quality shifted. My camera is actually or my stand for my camera is actually over at another location because we're not filming reading time in my house today. We're filming it at another place. So I'm just getting this all filmed really quickly. I want to thank you all for watching very much. And like I said in the previous clip, buy some reading time merch if you're wanting to support reading time. That money does not go to me. It goes to reading time because we want to make sure that we're doing amazing programs. And um, yes, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I, you know, I buy all this stuff <laughs> for my outfits. Money for reading time goes to other stuff like craft kits. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this. I know that I didn't really make very much on this, but I did make this vest and I spruced up the hat, the mask. We're still living that quarantine life, um, whatever that means. So I hope that you are staying safe and that you're making good decisions. And um, yes, if you would like to see some more of this outfit, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> watch, ooh. Bugs on Reading Time with the Queen's channel. I love you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye bye bye.